All right, so measure phase, right? So, so we had a review with the project sponsor, and they bought off everything and assigned you the belt and all that stuff. So measure phase, how's the process performing right now? So we're going through and saying, well, what's the baseline? Um, the reason we do that is because when we get to the point where we're making changes, we need to compare the results. Did we get worse? Did we stay the same or did we get better? All right. Did we improve cycle time or did we just make it worse? Did we, did we add 50 more people that we didn't need to add to begin with? Did we, uh, did we um, improve quality? Did we go from 75 to 100 or did we go from 75 to 25? Right. So, uh, so how is it performing? Um, so we'll go through and we'll put together some process maps, we'll collect some data, if there's some available. One of the problems with, uh, with the, the world that we live in is there's not a lot of data out there. We can collect it with a calendar. Hopefully if we're, sometimes with uh, workflow tools, uh, software that's out there and there's reviews and approvals going on, it will collect time date stamps. Again, that's calendar and, and you know, stopwatch method of gathering some data. And it's based a lot, a lot on cycle times. How many times does something have to go back through the review cycle? So that's a quality metric. Maybe there's an easy way to capture that. Um, and then at the end, oh, and we got to validate the measurement system. In manufacturing, this is really important. Is a variation come from the process or does it come from the measuring system? One of the things that, that, we've, that we use to teach green belts with this is uh, we'll have someone come up and they'll, they'll write their name, right, like four or five times. And someone will measure it with a stopwatch, someone will measure it with their wristwatch, and someone will measure it with a one Mississippi, two Mississippi method. Right? And we'll take a look at how different are those numbers. And um, uh, Here's the secret. The stopwatch and wristwatch are usually fairly close. The one Mississippi is way off. Um, so, that's, that's what we do when we go look at validating our measurement system. And then at the end, we'll, uh, we'll have the project sponsor we'll come and take a look at what we develop, agree, not agree, ask some questions, may go back and do a little more work. Um, because I didn't appropriately mentor the project sponsor into asking the right questions. There's a list of snotty questions to ask and the team needs to know what those are. Uh, kind of like what does the customer want with this project. Um, they need to know what the snotty questions are so they can answer those before you get to the snotty question question time. So, alright. So, process maps. This is uh, a couple of tools that we use. Um, we're we're going to go through, these modules are broken up into, you know, define, measure, analyze, and proof control. The first part will have some of the lean tools, the second part of it will have the Six Sigma tools. So when, we, uh, when we're doing, we're looking at flow, right? We're looking at how do we go through and, and wh what is the value that we're adding. So we use swim lane maps. Each lane here would be a person, it might be an organization, it might be a function. Um, but what we do is we you know, write down the things that are going on, are there decision points or inspection points, where do they go backwards in the flow, where do we have handoffs, that's where we cross from one lane into another. There's a lot of opportunities in dropped handoffs. It's almost like email, someone e you email someone a document and say, hey, can I get you to review this? And then nine days later they go, oh yeah, um, I just found this and uh, yeah, it's approved, right? Now it's eight days late. Um, this one's a linear flow map. I know it's hard to tell. That is a mess for linear flow, right? But it's uh, but that's how we collect it. We put the uh, I've got a roll of paper. We throw it up on the wall and we start putting sticky notes on it, right? And the reason we use sticky notes is because as we're collecting it with the smart people, um, they'll say, oh yeah, don't forget, we do this other thing. And so then we've got to pull the sticky notes off and slide them over and put the new one in. 
they're pretty responsive until you roll up the paper <laughs> you tape it down that's the secret but you also got to date these right put the name of the process and put what the date is that you collected on it because sometimes these will get rolled up unfortunately for some amount of time and then somebody's like hey well, how are you doing on that process and you roll it out right and it's changed six times or not, maybe it's still the same old craziness that we're going through before. But you've got a name and date on those um, and tape the stickies down. All right, three classifications of value. So when we talked about value added, this is the slide I was talking about. A value added activity. So we've got our, our process map up on the wall. We've got the yellow uh, canary, canary yellow sticky notes. We've got lines drawn where they need to be. And we and the belt will hand out, start handing out these little dots, red, yellow, and green dots. So we take a look at each sticky note and we ask, so is this a value, activity, a value added activity or not? Value added is three simple things. And we don't have to get real emotional about this because we're looking at the task. Did we change fit, form, or function? And is it something that matters to the customer? And did we do it right the first time? If we've met all three, then that gets a, stick, a green dot on that sticky uh, posted up on the wall. Right? We're not looking at is Julian value added or is Jerry value added? Is the task value added? Non-value added is going to get a red, get a little red dot on it, and uh, what that means is that is that it doesn't meet all three. Maybe it meets two, maybe it meets one, maybe it meets none. But uh, non-value added is one of those things that we could stop doing and nobody would ever notice. There's a lot of reds out there. Business non-value added, this is an activity that does not meet all three and it's dictated to us that we do this task or activity because of some law, regulation, rule. Somebody said, you're going to do it like this that we work for. And so this one gets a yellow dot on it. And we use these color codes to go through and prioritize well, what opportunities are we going to, how are we going to improve this. So we go attack all the reds first because, again, we could probably stop doing those and nobody would ever recognize but we need to find out why we're doing it. Um, it, it Maybe, you know, when... Uh, does everybody know about the roast? Cooking a roast story? Where, you know, your mom's cooking a roast and she cuts the ends off and she puts it in a pan, puts it in the oven, and you ask why? Why do you cut the ends off? Well, that's the way your grandmother did it, right? And you go ask grandmother, why do you cut the ends off the roast before you bake, well, that's the way my mother do it, right? Did it. And so you add, you go ask great grandmother. She said, "I cut the ends off the roast because that way it would fit in the pan." <laughs> right? That is culture. That is what culture is. It's these, it's these, uh, these things that we do that get passed down from one generation to another. You know, we need to ask why. Why do we do it like this? Well, because that's the way the last guy did it. Right? So, uh, so we go attack the reds and figure out how to get rid of those. And then we've got to start talking to people about the yellows. Okay, you know, it, it's um, guys, I've worked with a guy who was uh, uh, an airplane mechanic for Delta Airlines. And there's things that they did that, um, that were based on FAA regulations. And then they found a better way to do something, and so they went back to FAA and said, can we change this, whatever this reg is, right? Because maybe that was based on the old uh, DC-7s that they flew back in the 50s and 60s. Maybe it doesn't make sense to do that on a 787 now. So, uh, or any of the other planes that are still flying, and then, yeah, okay, you don't have to do this anymore. But this is the new way that it's done, and so it turns into a regulation, and, and hopefully it's one that's improved, not made it worse. And uh, 
So we have those type of things that we work to. Um, there are acquisition rules and there are software change, there's configuration management rules, right? And we have to look at those. And uh, what are we, uh, what, what, what skids do we need degrees to make sure that we're trying to make some improvement? 